What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back with... Gershwan! To do the same thing we've been doing for years on end, answering your questions in a title that we like to put on our title cards for the greater... This is a video series <clears throat> where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below, put a question in front of your question, because we get to those questions first. As I die... As my toe was itchy. This question comes from All Might. Are space marines able able to get sick normally, or do they have super immune systems? Immune systems? Immune systems. Mm. Well, the immune system is attached to the belly, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, just like the respiratory is attached to the balls. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why whenever you breathe, if you, if you notice, if you inhale twice and then exhale once, your balls twitch. Do it right now. You feel Ooh, it? I feel like a frog's throat. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> yes, uh, space marines have super immune systems. That's the whole point of being a superhuman. Yeah, everything a human has, space marines have it, but powerfuller. Can you imagine being a space marine and getting COVID and and just not making it? <laughs> not making it. <laughs> that would suck. Yeah. Um, there have been very few natural. Actually, there have been no natural diseases that i know of that a space marine has died from right um usually it's like nergified right like, oh they don't just have the flu like their skin is peeling off yeah and the the interesting part is that even those like nurgle rot and all those kind of things that Nurg the, the diseases that nurgle comes up with they don't actually kill the space marine there it's just a way to cause so much pain that the space marine would say you know what give it to me papa nurgle and then he, he fights for Papa Nurgle. Mm -hmm. Grandfather Nurgle? Yeah. Grandpappy Nurgle. Yeah. So, like, their immune system is, is on point. Right. We should uh, suck their blood. <laughs> what are we, blood angels? Yeah. And it's crazy to think about because, like, obviously our knowledge of, like, diseases, viruses, and stuff like that is so minuscule. Because it's all about, you know, Earth. But space marines, they go out into space hulks, different planets. They go into the warp. Just imagine what other, like, diseases and, like, nastiness is out there in the universe. Yep. And they're fine. Like, mm -hmm. they can breathe underwater. Um, for the most part, they're good in space. Yep. So it's like, they're really, really resilient. And it's like, they gotta be. Like, what the Emperor was doing and, like, how he was creating these weapons of war like it's just it, it's crazy to think about that somebody could think of a way to make a super soldier so resilient and so tough yeah and the reason for all that too because i was just thinking about it it wasn't like the emperor wasn't trying to create a better human he was trying to create a good warrior the tool yeah because during the unification war the techno barbarian warlords uh they would use what is it called biological warfare mm -hmm. and Obviously, like, it would do things, it would mutate the body in a certain way, so the Emperor had to have warriors that were so uh, durable that they could survive um, those types of weapons. And these tactics have been seen <clears throat> since, like, primitive times, where, like, people would literally get, like, a sharp stick and stick it in poop, and, like, as long as you stab somebody, you don't have to kill them, but that wound would fester and get infected and eventually kill the person. Yep. So, um, yeah, they're, they're tough. It is, yeah. This next question comes from Jericho's End. How did they navigate the warp when the Emperor was leading the Crusades and no one was in the Golden Throne? So the Emperor was actually powering the Astronomicon while he was on Crusade. Mm -hmm. That's how much of a G he was. Yep. And is, depending on your outlook. Right. Half full or half empty? Yes. <laughs> Next question. Uh, this one is by uh, Dragon Punch nine zero three. What's your favorite type of animal and why? Hmm. That's a really tough question. I wish like I had an answer like this, and I probably did back when I was five. Um, but I remember saying the Komodo dragon was pretty cool. That and kangaroos. Kangaroos are, are weird. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know why they exist. They're swole. They got claws. Mm -hmm. And they're not real predators. No. They're just like badass. It's, it's weird that 
nature decided to just create a badass. <laughs> they could put a dog in a headlock. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that video? Yeah. And then the man <laughs> ended up hitting him in the face. Yeah. Um, I, I think when I was younger, I, w I really liked rhinos. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. They're dumb. I mean, they provide good cover and good transport. This, uh, I mean, look at Ace Ventura. Oh, he was a space true. marine before space marines were cool. Exactly. <laughs> he he um he disembarked from a rhino in a very fashionable way. Yeah. So Nash would approve. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Uh this is by CY. The Tempesta Scions are supposed to be the elite of the Imperial Guard. Uh yet you hear some lore about them fighting gene stealers. But why is it that they don't get more respect if they're supposed to be so badass? Who? The Tempesta Scions. Um, oh. Yeah, I don't know. It's like whenever you hear of a badass like Imperial Guard force or regiment, it's always like a named character. It's you, like people often overlook the Scions because maybe gameplay wise, like on the tabletop, there's not enough models to represent that or maybe they're not good enough on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. But it's like at the end of the day, it's like putting like a green beret and then you have like a regular like army soldier it's like that's that's how much of a difference it is it's supposed to be and the struggle with the 40k universe is the quality or the yeah the quality of the enemy mm -hmm. so if you have a, a tempesta scion sure he's better than a regular guardsman and he can probably destroy like cultists and and, and orcs and stuff like that but when you start bringing in like demons um eldar psychers then, then, then in those situations, obviously you have to uh, call upon like Astartes. Right. So it's like, why settle for um, this when like you know you can get something way better with the Space Marines? Right. It's it's literally like looking at like minor league to major league, and then yeah. you have like God League. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. It's like yeah, they're good in their league, but look at what's in the galaxy. Right. Next question comes from Asterix. Asterix, in the lore, who is, strictly speaking, the most psychically powerful, strongest Primarch? What about any notable crazy Tyranids? So, uh, most physically powerful slash strong Primarch. I think they always said that um, Vulcan was the most yeah. physically, like, he was the largest and most aggressive, or not aggressive, but like... like strong. Yeah. But at the same time... <laughs> uh... I forgot his name. Angron? No, 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 not Angron. Dude held up a titan. Oh. Uh, um, Perturabo. Yeah, Perturabo. Yeah. That takes muscle mass. Yeah. He also had a bunch of cybernetics. That's true. Yeah. Um, and then, what, what else did you say? Uh, Psychically powerful? Magnus. Yeah. And then, what about any notable crazy Tyranids? We have Old One Eye. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing about Tyranids, or the annoying part about Tyranids, is that, like... You can kill old one eye, but just, the hive mind's just gonna create him again. Right. Because like you have named Tyranids, but it's it's like I don't know. It's it's almost like they can never die as right. long as the hive mind exists. Right. Ga Galerjo, Galerjo. G. Speaking of Tyranids, how do their bio ships move in space? Is it fart jet power? No, it's called uh, a narwhal, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically like a, a little tiny bio ship that the um, hive mind or the hive fleet shoots out. And then what it does is it folds time and space. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, kind of like um, if you're on the uh, if you're on the bed right now, extend your arm. Your hand is going to represent um, the narwhal. Yeah, and then just grab the bed sheet and then pull it. The bed sheet is basically time and space, and that's how the Tyranids jumped. Mm -hmm. yeah. They also explained it in um, Stranger Things, where it's like you could take a piece of paper, you make a hole on one side, make a hole on the other, and you fold the paper in half. So it's like you traverse that space by not actually moving that space. Yep. Physics. This next question comes from Simon Teese. If the Horus Heresy had not happened, how would the Imperium look in the 40k universe? Cute. Super cute. Mm -hmm. I think it would look more like the Tau Empire. More like machinery, cybernetics. Uh, like no. Sleek? 
No, I mean like um, Imperial Truth, more... Um, like welcoming? Yeah, more welcoming. Not so much like repressed and regress and, you know, weird like, shit. The, the whole thing about the heresy was like <laughs> traitors from within. But do yeah. you think that'll still stem the xenophobia from Xenos? No, I think they would still be xenophobic, but I don't think it would be to the extent that it is now. Because you got to remember that the abhumans, there's like a hundred and something species of abhumans. That's true. Now there's like four. Right. So I think the Imperium and the Imperial Truth specifically um, was more accepting because they knew that like humanity needed um, or humanity could not be stagnant. They mm -hmm. had to grow. Right. Admiral Lasers, what do you think would come out of the Gilliman and Yavrain relationship? And will it be the next edition or the next event? I honestly don't think anything's going to come out of it. I think that was just like a plot to further bring uh, Gilliman into the 40k universe in this current time. And sell Eldar models. Yeah. Um, but what would be cool is if they actually did have a relationship and they had a baby. And it was the the thing that got retconned. I forgot what they're called. It was like the half Eldar, half human, really pro, like strong, powerful psyker dudes. Oh yeah, I, I can't remember if they have a name, but yeah, mm -hmm. that would be cool. Yeah, maybe that'd be a way to kind of lessen xenophobia, at least with Eldar, because Eldar look close enough to humans, but then like so do Ratlings and Ogren. Right. So. And the Imperium is doing stuff with them. Mm -hmm. This next question comes from the big one In my hood My sister is known for giving the best BJ's I know I should I know I should be proud of that But it makes me feel uncomfortable Am I being overly sensitive? Yeah Yeah I mean you gotta support family right? No, no matter what they do <laughs> Yeah there you go Good luck with that Mm-hmm. I wish we could be of more help, but, I mean, all I can say is, uh, where do you live? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Jericho's End. Do you know when they will add more lore on the prophet Gazk? Uh, good question. Um, probably not anytime soon. We just got a new model, so. Right. Yeah, I mean, he got his head chopped off. And sewn back on. Uh, yep, so. Do you know who did the sewing? It was uh, Mad Doc Brotsnick. Yep. He's the he's the OG MVP Mad Doc. Mm -hmm. He wear mat he he wear masks. <laughs> this next question comes from Night Book. Are orc attack wounds the most powerful weapons of the orc race? If so, how do they compare to other super weapons? So orc attack wounds are not so much like a a powerful weapon, more of like I don't know what is it. They just stumbled upon that. Yeah. Um, I think some of the most powerful weapons that they have created have been, like, um, s they're called Psy Titans. So, like, uh, if you check out our 40 facts on the smartest orc, I think. Uh, what's his name? I forget his name. But basically, they they use wall energy to create a force field around a Stampa, and the Stampa destroys. I think that's one of the most powerful weapons. And then, you know, Stompas have titan size um, weapons on them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The ingenuity. Ingenuity. Nico Tugas, if you guys found yourselves to be entombed within a dreadnought, which dreadnought would you want it to be? As much as I love the Leviathan, I'd probably go with a Venerable. I'd do Relic Contemptor, because that's probably one of my favorite models in all of 40k. That's the one that looks all fancy, right? Mm-hmm. With the shield? With uh, the eagles? They could have a shield. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, it's like the, the Horus Heresy Dreadnoughts. The ones that actually have legs and a body, instead of it being all boxy. Yeah. Um, that's a tough one. I think the... What is the latest Primaris one? Oh, the Redemptor? Yeah, or the that. one that's like a baby carrier. No, not that one, because that's not that's no, just a baby te carrier. Yeah, technically, that's not a dreadnought. Yeah. yeah, that's a war suit. So yeah, I would do that. No reason. I think it just looks cool. Next question. Uh, this one is by. No, we already did that one. 
Oh, Jamie Garth. How did they beat, end, and thwart the enslaver plague? He just kind of went away. And kind of waited it out. And it's like, well, humanity and all of life is going to get taken by these things. So, we'll wait. Yeah. That's, that's the Necron speaking. Right, yeah. <laughs> they left. They, uh, hibern- they went into hibernation, into slumber in, in their Necron tombs. And the Silent King just went to a different galaxy. Yeah, and I think the reason that um, the enslaver plagues, the enslaver plague, didn't end up being as bad. This is not supported by canon. This is just like what I've, I think, that my theory is because there were so many psychically powerful races. The demons started to manifest, or like the chaos gods started to manifest, creating demons, and those demons um, would go out and kill warp entities. And enslavers are just basically warp entities. Mm-hmm. So now there's a new top dog within the the Immaterium, which was demons. So the demons got rid of the enslavers. There are a few still here and there, but like nothing to create another like blanketing off the uh, the whole galaxy. Right, yep. So basically just the warp got diversified. Mm-hmm. They had a Cambrian explosion of demons. See way. See. Next question. Uh Connor Motzinger. Why does it seem like GW keeps making the Emperor more and more of a cold, careless master when he obviously did care about humanity and his sons? Hmm. Well, I mean, when you think about it and you present to the cold, hard facts, there is a lot that the Emperor could have done that he didn't, such as sharing information with the Primarchs that could easily have stopped the Horus heresy. He could have cared more about humanity and how they went about... Um, like venerating him when he, obviously he was like nah don't be about religion and then Lorgar was like no religion and then uh, he was I think he was way too hard on Lorgar when he like burned and destroyed his favorite city for proclaiming the emperor as god yeah um, the way he went to recover the Primarchs could have been handled differently um, there's just a lot that the emperor could have done differently to make him see more caring and affectionate than just some i don't know war master i guess yeah that's a tough one because like i think he i mean the emperor is is who he is maybe the the reason gw is doing that is just because they want to give better um stories to the chaos gods or to the chaos space marines mm-hmm. so that they can sell more chaos space marine models and then kind of like um you know, sell product that way. Yeah. By making one side more enticing. Um, but that's all I can think of. I don't know. Yeah. Like when you look at it, if the emperor was this perfect being, not a lot of people would be able to relate. And when you humanize a character, that brings you uh, more emotionally attached to the emperor. Yeah. Um, this next question comes from Timothy Armstrong. <clears throat> fourth time, Fourth time asking. What do you think of the Salamander Space Marine chapter being the second best unit on the tabletop for 9th edition? That's good. Um, in my opinion, it's always going to be a wheel of which Space Marine chapter is the best. Um, in terms of looks and lore, Salamanders are really cool. Um, the whole being like blacksmiths and actually caring for humanity and being all about like fire and Melta and um, Salamanders and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it also does uh, say a lot about like the types of weapons that would work well with other, um, uh, what is it called, races and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, because you you do want to uh, you, you do want your warriors to have strong strength, so their weapons should have like high strengths, I should say, mm-hmm. and then also um, try to hit as many because aren't flamers um, automatic hits? Yeah, chapter tactic lets you reroll misses or one miss for every time you shoot or whatever so that synergy Mm -hmm. uh hopefully we start seeing it with when the codexes start popping popping out for the xeno races anyways hopefully (laughs) yeah there hasn't been very many xeno releases no just the dark elder yeah because it's been space marines space marines space marines chaos chaos dark eldar and i don't even think dark eldar is out yet They, they just announced that it's coming bummer But yeah, those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. As always, we've been The Sound Alchemist. Gersh One. And we are out.
Freedom, but you know.